Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class on the basics of stochastics. Now, please look below and click on that icon, the bell icon below, so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new class, or click on the subscription button and subscribe to my channel, and you'll be able to see all the videos and all the webinars I give, and you'll be able to research them all you want. I would appreciate it if you could click on that subscribe button. Now, stochastics can help us time our trades. It gives us overbought and oversold indications. So have you ever had an apple fall on your head while sitting under a tree? No, neither have I. But Sir Isaac Newton did, or so the saying goes. And that's where we get the universal law of gravitation. What goes up must come down. And it's not true just for apples, it's also true for the financial markets. And there are several chart oscillators that try to identify when assets are turning and investors might exploit those price movements. One of the more regularly followed trend indicators is stochastics. It measures the distance between an asset's closing price and the range of highs and lows over a specific period. Now, Stochastics falls into a group of indicators, or technical indicators, known as oscillators, and it falls into an even tighter group known as bounded oscillators, because stochastics, no matter what happens in the market, will always come out between 0 and 100. So it's bounded between 0 and 100. Then it oscillates between those numbers, and we have barriers that we put up, or fences we put up, between the 80 and the 20. When it goes above 80, before it reaches the 100, when it can't go any farther, it's telling us the asset is overbought. When it goes below 20, it's telling us the asset is oversold. <coughs> now, of course, we can customize or adjust these fences or barriers. We can make it 75 and 25. We can make it 70 and 30. But the 0 and 100 are, are permanent. Now, if you notice, I used the word overbought and oversold. I didn't say give us buy and sell, okay? Because an asset that is overbought can remain overbought, and an asset that is oversold can remain oversold. <coughs> so, if you visualize a rocket going up in the air, and before it will turn back down to the ground, it's going to lose its momentum. It's going to slow down. Now, if we can see this slowing down process, we can then predict it's going to, it's starting to fall. But imagine a rocket shooting up in the air and it starts losing its momentum, but it's still continuing carrying its upward and it happens to hit a hot air pocket that allows it to go even farther up or it gets caught by a, 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 you know, a gust of air and continues upward. Okay. So can an asset. So it tells you the asset is losing momentum or there's been a shift in momentum, but not that it's going to fall back to earth at that precise moment. Now, there's very little we have to do to put stochastics on our charts. Stochastics is one of the most popular indicators, so it's automatically dropped on our charts. And here you can see I went up to indicators, I went to stochastics, and I clicked on it and it dropped it on the bottom of my chart. Now the standard stochastics indicator is dropped on your chart using inputs of a 14 period K, what's called a K, it's the K line on the chart. And then it uses, it gives us the D line, which is a three period moving average of the K line. When those two lines cross, it also tells us something. So we could, at this point, take the D line off of our indicator. And as you see, we can adjust it from the 80 and 20, but the 80 and 20 is the standard definition. Lots of people use 75 and 25. Okay. So you can see the 100 over here, let me get my, the 100 over here to the right. Oops. The 
the 100 over there to the right. You can see the zero over here. Okay. And then we see the barriers, which are set at 80 and 20. Again, you can change these by just clicking on the buttons. So now what we have is our stochastics indicator on our chart. Okay. So supposedly this area here is telling us the asset is overbought. Here is telling us it's oversold. Here again is telling us it's overbought. But it's not as simplistic as that. Okay, because as I said, an asset that is losing its momentum can remain in overbought. So we see on our charts, the asset moved up, but then it stayed over here and it still, it didn't lose its momentum or start turning down till here. Much, a much later time in this reality. Okay. Now, one of the things we look for is when the indicator breaks above the 80 and then falls back into the below the 80 and then breaks back above. Okay, the biggest clue is when it falls below, goes above the 80 and falls back in. That's telling us that trend is definitely in trouble. Okay. When it comes back in and falls much lower, we know we're into a reversal or a downtrend. So let's talk about what these calculations are to get this indicator on your chart before we go on to how we would actually interpret them. So as with most oscillators, you'll need to know the directional trend of the asset. And you'll need to determine that trend over a set period of time. For example, using a 20 period moving average can help you determine if an asset's moving in an uptrend or a downtrend. Okay. Then to help us do this easier, we have a second line that's put on a chart. This is called the, the D line. The D line is a three period moving average of the K line. And when those two lines cross over, we get some type of an indication as you can see right here. So the fast moving line is shown as the K line and the slow moving line is the D line. A slow stochastic smooths the K line using a default three period simple moving average. So whether we're talking about apples or stocks, gravity pulls them back towards earth or back towards their averages. Sir Isaac found his big moment by a happy accident, but charting with tools, including stochastics, can mean that you won't have to wait for the apple to drop, but you can try to pinpoint when it might wiggle loose. The stochastics oscillator is a momentum indicator comparing the closing price of a security to the range of its price over a certain period of time. Now, if we close your eyes and imagine price moving, not a chart, just price moving. If price is moving up, you would expect that the closing price would be nearest to the high. And that the low, and if price is moving down, it would be nearest to the low because if price is moving up, it may push up a little bit higher and the bulls ease down a little bit, but it'll still close near its highest point. Okay. And this is what stochastics measures. It's the difference between, or it measures the range of price over a certain period of time as compared to its close price. Because the other thing is, if, say, price opened at one, soared all the way up to two, but fell all the way down to minus 10, and then climbed back up to zero again, okay, that move between the high and the low is critically important because that's telling us that bulls, the bears, at some point, were able to muster a lot of strength. So the general theory serving as the foundation for this indicator is that in a market trending upward, prices will close near the high and in a market trending downward, the prices will close near the low. Transaction signals are created when the percent K line crosses the three period moving average, which we call the D line. Well, let's go back to the chart. Okay. So what we have on the chart right now is 
the K line. I'm going to go back. We had a D line on there before, but I took it off for a second. So I'm going to go add that back on. And I'm going to make these a little bit bolder so you can see them better. Okay. Now, whenever the percent K line crosses the percent D line, we're getting some type of market indication. So you can see all the way here moving to where price is at the moment. Okay, and this is a live chart. We have the beginnings. We actually have a touch and a cross. Okay, so this is telling us at this point that we're getting some type of an indication, a buy or a sell. So what this is telling us since we're in the oversold territory is, and we're getting a crossover, that this should be giving us a buy. So what it's saying is this trend is about to continue upward. So we would be looking to enter a long position right about here. So we saw the trend moving up, down, easing, up, down, easing, and now it's moved into this long sideways range. And what Stochastics is predicting is that the, the ongoing uptrend is about to continue now. Now, Stochastics measures the momentum of price. If you visualize the rocket going up in the air before it can turn down, it must slow down. Before we get into using Stochastics, we should be clear that what momentum actually is. Investopedia defines momentum as the rate of acceleration of the price of a security at the moment. I am always a fan of going into how an indicator analyzes price without getting too deep into the mathematics. So the stochastics indicator analyzes the price range over a specific period of time. 14 is the standard. Okay. This means that the stochastics indicator takes the absolute high and the absolute low of that period and compares it with the closing price. So we look back over 14 periods and we take the highest it's ever been in those 14 periods and the lowest it's ever been in those 14 periods and we compare it to the current close. Okay. So the mathematical calculation isn't so difficult. It's time consuming, but it is the percent K is 100 times the current close minus the lowest point in the 14 previous sessions divided by the highest point minus the lowest point in the 14 sessions. The general theory serving as the foundation for this indicator is that in a market trending upward, prices will close near the high and in a market trending downward, prices should close near the low. Transaction signals are created when the percent K crosses through the three period moving average, which is called the percent D. The premise of stochastics holds that an asset's closing price tends to trade at the high end of the day's price action. Price action is the prices at which an asset traded throughout the session. So when your stochastics is a high value, it means that the price closing near the top of the range over the certain time period or the number of candles. A low stochastic conversely tells us that an asset closed near the low of that price range over those 14 periods. So in other words, if you've got your 14 periods and you drew a line and put the top across and I'll drew a line at the bottom across, you have this range, okay? Then, you draw a line at the closing price of this, of this current time frame, and you can see over that 14 day period, did that after the close near the highest it's been or near the lowest it's been? Okay, Un be able to visualize that less of, than looking at the overbought and oversold situation will give you the biggest piece of information that you need. Now, I don't use stochastics as one of my indicators. Not because I believe in or don't believe it. I don't use overbought and oversold because I'm a price action trader. But the market around the globe 
finds that stochastics is one of the most reliable indicators and it is one of the most popular. There is lots of information on the internet about stochastics. Okay, how to use it, strategies, how to apply it, how to use divergence, how to use overbought, oversold, how to use transaction signals. But the best way to master stochastics, because it's not quite difficult, is to use it yourself. Put it on your strategy, start to look at it, start to use it, start to understand how you would read it. So as with any other trading concept or tools, you should not use stochastics indicator by itself. To receive meaningful signals and improve the quality of your trades, you can combine stochastics indicators with at least three other tools, moving averages. So moving average will always help you on the side of the trends. Okay, price formation, okay, such as triangles, wedges, head and shoulders. And you should never look at an indicator without looking at the trend line. Trend lines will help you because if that trend line is violated, you know that something is wrong. So you should be looking at the crossovers, the break below the 80 and 20, and the trend line at all times. So you might not need the stochastics indicator when you're able to read the momentum on your charts by looking at the candles. But if the stochastics is a tool of your choice, it certainly does not hurt to have it on your charts. More importantly, there is a lot of wrong knowledge being shared among traders and even widely used tools such as stochastics is often misinterpreted. Do not blindly believe in what others tell you. Do your research, build your trading knowledge and do your own testing. And remember, just because an asset is overbought or oversold doesn't mean it's going to reverse. So thank you very much for joining us and Look for our videos on stochastic strategies, which we've done as a separate video, and try to add it slowly into your trading scenario. And have a great trading day. And remember, trading is not simple. It's not black and white. It's not just a set of rules. Bye now.